In this video, we will take a look at this concept of structured correlation matrices. Specifically, we will focus on this property of positive definiteness. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM part 1 exam. Now, to understand this property of positive definiteness, let's take a look at a very simple solid example. Let's say we have three stocks. Let me denote them as stock A, stock B and stock C. And let's say their respective random returns are denoted by RA, RB and RC. Let's say we are given the individual standard deviations or let's say volatilities of these three stocks. And we are also given, let's say, the pairwise correlations between the returns of these stocks. Okay. What I can then do quickly is that using these three pairwise correlations, I can create what's called the correlation matrix. In this situation, I have three assets, three stocks, and therefore my correlation matrix is a three cross three square matrix containing three rows and three columns. Okay. In this correlation matrix, I will have ones sitting along the diagonal of this matrix and in the non-diagonal positions, I will have these pairwise correlations which have been listed here. Okay. Specifically, in this position of this matrix, I will have the correlation between RA and RB, which is my row AB, which is equal to minus 0.9. In this position, I will have the correlation between RA and RC, which is rho AC given to be minus 0.5. And in this position, I will have the correlation between RB and RC, which is rho BC given to be again minus 0.9. Okay. Understand this, that a correlation matrix is a symmetric matrix. The correlation between RA and RB is the same as the correlation between RB and RA. That is why you have the same entry being placed in both of these two positions. Similarly, we can reason this out why the entries in these two positions and the entries in these two positions are the same. Okay, so remember this that your correlation matrix is a square matrix with ones along the diagonal pairwise correlations in the non-diagonal places and this matrix is a symmetric matrix. Okay. Now, what I can do is that I can combine the information in this correlation matrix with the information provided by these individual standard deviations or volatilities of returns to create for myself another, in this case, 3 cross 3 square matrix which is called the variance-covariance matrix. Okay? In the variance-covariance matrix, you will have the individual variances sitting along the diagonal of the matrix and you will have the pairwise covariances sitting in the non-diagonal positions. Okay? If you were to try and reason out these numbers, it's actually very simple. This guy is the variance of Ra, nothing but 0.2 squared. This guy is the variance of Rb, nothing but 0.1 squared. And this guy is the variance of Rc, nothing but 0.3 squared. Okay? This guy is the covariance between Ra and Rb. And this number is simply the product of rho AB, which is minus 0.9, that times sigma A, which is 0.2, that times sigma b, which is 0.1. Okay, so minus 0.9 times 0.2 times 0.1 gives you this minus 0.018. Okay, similarly, this minus 0.03 is nothing but rho ac, which is minus 0.5, this times 0.2, this times 0.3. Okay, now, this matrix is also a symmetric matrix. The covariance of Ra and Rb is the same as the covariance of RB and RA. 
That is why you have the same entry sitting in both these positions. Okay. Similarly, you have the same entry sitting in these two positions and the same entry sitting in these two positions. Okay. Now, as far as notation is concerned, remember this that a variance covariance matrix is denoted by this capital letter sigma. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's create a portfolio for ourselves by using these three stocks, stock A, stock B and stock C in these weights or allocations. Okay, so in our portfolio, I will have 30% allocated to stock A, 50% to stock B and 20% to stock C. What I can do then is that I can write down the return of this portfolio denoted by RP as a linear combination of these random returns RA, RB and RC using these weights which are given here. Okay, so my RP is given by this formula or expression. Okay, now using these individual weights and the entries in my variance covariance matrix, my next step will be to calculate the variance of this RP. The variance of RP would simply be equal to this guy squared, this times the variance of RA, which is 0 0.04 plus this guy squared times the variance of RB, which is 0 0.01, plus this guy squared times the variance of RC, which is 0 0.09, plus two times this guy times this guy times the covariance of RA and RB, which is minus 0 0.018, plus two times this guy times this guy times the covariance of RA and RC, which is this guy, plus 2 times this guy times this guy times the covariance of RB and RC, which is this guy. Okay, pause this video and check this, that the variance of RP using the, the expression, the calculation which I just now described to you, turns out to be minus 0 0.0047. Okay, and this result is problematic. The variance of a random variable cannot be negative. And what we are encountering here is a negative answer. Okay, and let's try and understand why the variance of RP came out to be negative. Well, the culprit here is the correlation matrix that we've chosen to work with. Specifically, this correlation matrix is not internally consistent. Now, what does this mean? To understand what this means, quickly recall what's the intuitive meaning of correlation. Recall that the correlation between two random variables is a measure of the degree of linear dependence between them. If Ra and Rb have this correlation of minus 0.9, it means that the dependence between them is strongly negative, which means that if RA were to go up, RB will come down on average. Or you can say this, that RA and RB, they tend to move in opposite directions. If I were to now focus on this guy, which is correlation between RB and RC, given that it is again minus 0.9, it tells me that there is a strong negative dependence between RB and RC and these two returns, they also tend to move in opposite directions, right? If I were to combine what I just now said about the dependence between RA and RB and between RB and RC, intuitively, it tells me that the dependence between RA and RC should be a positive one. Okay, they should tend to move in the same direction. But the correlation rho AC is given to be minus 0 0.5. And herein lies the internal inconsistency in this correlation matrix. Okay, this is the reason why this correlation matrix is not internally consistent. 
A more formal way of saying the same thing is that this correlation matrix is not positive definite. Okay, this correlation matrix lacks this property of positive definiteness. Right? Because this correlation matrix is not positive definite, therefore, when we created this portfolio by combining these assets, the variance of the return of this portfolio turned out to be negative. Okay? Now, let me do this. Let me try and more formally present this definition of positive definiteness. For a bunch or collection of assets, given their correlation matrix, if this correlation matrix is indeed positive definite, no matter how you combine these assets using whatever weights or allocations to create a portfolio, the variance of the return of that portfolio will always turn out to have a positive value. Okay, no matter what set of weights or allocations you use, the variance of the return of your portfolio will turn out to be positive if your correlation matrix is positive definite. Okay, a more mathematical way of saying the same thing is that no matter what set of weights you use to create your portfolio, that means whatever is your choice of weights vector, the product which is given by weights transpose times the variance covariance matrix times your weights vector, this product which is nothing but the variance of your return of your portfolio will always turn out to be positive no matter what W you chose to work with, provided this W does not have all zeros in it. It has to be a meaningful set of weights. Okay, this is this property of positive definiteness. Now, before I stop, let me very quickly answer for you two simple questions related to positive definiteness. The first question is, practically speaking, when do we encounter this problem of lack of positive definiteness? Well, we encounter this problem when we are conducting this exercise of stress testing. Okay? Usually speaking, the base or unbumped correlation matrix that we start with is indeed positive definite. Okay? It's only when we subjectively bump the individual correlations sitting in this matrix up or down do we kind of break this matrix and start to encounter this problem of lack of positive definiteness. Okay? It is this subjective bumping of correlations up or down which introduces this problem of lack of positive definiteness. Okay, the second question is how do we ensure that the correlation matrix that we are working with indeed is positive definite? Well, what we can do is that we can impose a structure on our correlation matrix and herein lies the title of this video which is structured correlation matrices and this structure then helps us ensure that our correlation matrix is positive definite. The first simple structure that we can impose is that we can assume that all pairwise correlations in our correlation matrix, they are all the same and they are all set to be the same positive value. Okay, set all pairwise correlations in your correlation matrix to be the same positive value. Okay, in this situation, you can be sure that your correlation matrix is indeed positive definite. The second kind of structure that you can impose on your correlation matrix that will ensure positive definiteness is to impose what's called the one factor model. Okay, in the one factor model, what we assume is that to account for, let's say, the dependence between RA and RB, we will account for this dependence by assuming that both RA and RB 
they have a dependence on a common factor or a common random variable denoted by capital F, let's say. Okay, so in this structure, we are assuming that a portion or a component of R A comes from F, okay, with a weight or factor loading, let's say, of beta A, and the remaining or second component of R A comes from a specific random variable epsilon A, a random variable which is specific to R A. Okay, some portion comes from a common random variable and the remaining portion comes from a specific random variable. Similarly, some portion of RB comes from F and the remaining portion, the remaining component comes from a specific random variable epsilon B. Okay, now by imposing such a one-factor model, we are able to realize two important advantages. The first advantage is that this one-factor model helps make this task of populating our correlation matrix rather easy, especially if we are dealing with many constituents or many assets in our portfolio. Okay, that's the first advantage. The second advantage is, of course, that by using this one-factor model, we are able to ensure that the correlation matrix that we arrive at is indeed positive definite. Okay, this video was all about understanding structured correlation matrices and specifically this property of positive definiteness.